Um, what now? I don't know if I want to like spend the next couple of days doing stuff and like try out all the different things that we can do. I, I, I kind of, because I want to be able to know like how this is all going to work um, before I really give my final thoughts in the game. But I'm going to tell you what I feel about it That's now good. and I think how everything is going to work. So I really enjoy the game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very much like Persona or just any type of turn-based strategy game, but I like that the combat, you also have the out-of-combat strategy, or out-of-combat part of the game. Uh, let me turn the music down a little bit. So you have the out-of-combat where you can just go, you know, and fight things out-of-combat, which is really nice because you don't really want to go into combat with low-level monsters and have to do that whole turn-based strategy thing. It can be very tedious, so you can just walk up to them, you know, hit square, smash them, whatever, uh, and you still gain XP for that, which is very, very nice. So I like that about the combat. But even in the main combat of the game, the turn-based combat, there's a lot of strategy there. You have the front row, you have the back row, uh, so you do more damage to the enemy if you're on the front row, but you also take more damage from the enemy on the front row. Back row, you do less damage with melee attacks to the enemy on the back row, but you take less damage from the enemy. Uh, but if you do magic attacks from the back row, you do more damage. I uh, also like that some attacks, the, the enemy will be like, is targeting the front row, and you can move all your characters out of the front row so they don't get hit at all. Sometimes they target the back row, you can move them all forward so they don't get hit there, which is really cool. Uh, so there's a little bit more strategy in, as far as movement is concerned, which a lot of these types of turn-based games don't have that uh, so I, do, I really do like that a lot um, the weak point stuff and the crit stuff being able to have your actions so you have three party members in your party each one gets one full action uh, but if you hit a weak point using a spell let's say they're weak to fire and you use fire it will then you know use half of your uh, your action allowing you to use another half somewhere else uh, and half an action if you have half an action left, you can still use a full action for that half action, which is kind of hard to explain. Uh, but you can end up getting up to six actions per turn, assuming you you use things like uh, weak points and you get crits, which is really, really nice. So you can take those three actions and turn them into six, uh, up to six, as far as I can tell. You might be able to do some other things to get some more. Um, and the last thing is the synergy attacks, which we just learned about. Uh, those seem like they're going to be a lot of fun. So they use up your full action on two characters, but they do some sort of big bonus. So you're going to be combining two characters, like the knight combined with the warrior, or the knight combined with the healer, or the warrior combined with the healer, those kinds of things, which will allow you to do special actions. They could be buffs for your characters. They could be extra damage. They could be debuffs for the enemies. Um, all sorts of various things that you can do with that, which... Seems like it's going to be awesome once you get everything unlocked, all the different archetypes unlocked. Um, and then speaking of archetypes, there are a bunch of them. I think we have, what, like seven to choose from now? I don't even I don't even know. Um, can I even look at these really right now? I can look at details. Wait, is it equipment? Cradle, healer. So we have, like, you know, the healer, seeker, the mage. So we have a lot of different archetypes. Uh, and then we also have the warrior... Uh, he's also Seeker, and then we have the Knight here, and we have, let's see, the Healer, Seeker, Mage, Knight, Warrior, whatever. Uh, those are the only ones I, I think I have unlocked. So that's a bunch of different things, but then those also can advance up, which I really like, and that's all based on relationship. Uh, so you want to build up your relationship with different characters, and the more you build up your relationship, the more of those archetypes you will unlock and be able to unlock advanced versions of those archetypes as you build up your relationship. Um, they do cost a thing called mag, which you get from doing fights, uh, maybe turning in quests, things like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, and every single character can learn every archetype if you so choose to do that. And then they also have their levels within that. So you have your character levels, and then you have archetype levels. And as you level up those archetypes, they unlock new skills. But then your character also levels up independently of that, uh, where you can allocate different stat points. So if you want your character to mostly be some sort of spellcaster, you could go in intelligence. If you want to be more of a melee character, you could in, uh, do more strength. Um, defensive characters might want to get agility or endurance. Uh, and then there's also a luck stat, which gives you more items. I don't know if it affects crit or not. I assume it probably does. Um, so you could build your characters around that, which is really awesome. I like 
I like that where you can, you know, you're building up your characters, then you're also building up the archetypes separately, and then you can mix and match those archetypes um, to make different things happen, uh, which you do want to do. You don't want to have three of the same archetype on three of the characters at the same time, uh, unless you really want to do that. But I would recommend, you know, mixing and matching those and having a tank, having a damage dealer, and then having a healer or something along those lines. Um, so I like that you can do that. But if you know that you're going into a fight where you just need a lot of damage, you can just pick three big damage dealers and just go straight in and go full onslaught of damage, which is kind of my style. So I might try that at some point and see how it works out. Um, what else about this game is there really to talk about? The voice acting is amazing. I love the animation uh, style in it. The, the, the cut scenes uh, are all, you know, beautifully animated. Um, there's There's a lot of really cool animation scenes in there that I don't really want to talk about too much because I don't want to spoil anything. So I don't really want to spoil much of the game at all. Uh, so I don't really want to show too much of it. Uh, but I do like the art in the game. Uh, you know, the characters when you're running around here. We can actually jump on the sword too. We just got that. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, I just unlocked that. So um, anyway, art, very cool. The voiceovers, very, very nice. Um, you know, you can feel the emotion in the characters. A lot of times when you play these games, you get a a voice actor that just kind of drones on, uh, kind of like, you know, what's, what's his happened? name? Bueller? Bueller? Anyway, um, these characters, you can feel the emotion in there, so they, they do a great job with the voice acting. The music is phenomenal. The sound, uh, all of that is fantastic. So overall, I'm going to give this game, you know, a big kudos. Uh, it does come out on October 10th. Um, which means that it's going to kind of drop around the same time that the DLC for Diablo comes out and an update for the first Ascendant, which I am currently playing both of those games. So I may not get this on day one. However, I do plan on playing this game uh, in the future. Uh, you can play the demo now, which took me about eight hours. It comes out on the 11th, Burl. Okay, so it comes out on October 11th. Um, the demo took me approximately eight hours. So I've got, you know, seven hours, 46 minutes in. Uh, you could probably do it a little bit faster depending on what you want to do. Um, but there's a lot of information to read. I really, that's another thing I really like is you can go here to, to this and there's so much information here that is lore building for the world. Uh, I do recommend reading all of this. However, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, so it's, you know, it's just there for people that really want to build that lore around the area. Uh, but it does give you a little bit more insight on what's going on. Uh, as far as the story is concerned, I really enjoy the story. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's also very interesting and mysterious, uh, you know, kind of keeps you, it gives you enough information to where you know what's going on, but it keeps enough from you to where you want to keep exploring and finding out more and see where things are leading. Uh, so I really like that aspect. So overall, um, fantastic game. I really enjoy it. If you like turn-based strategy games, RPGs, those kind of things, you'll probably love this game. Uh, if you want something that's more action-based, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you like something for a very, very deep story uh, with some really cool combat mechanics, they are turn-based mostly combat mechanics, then I uh, highly recommend this game. Um, so yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it.